It only took a few minutes of Stacy looking the other way for six-year-old Alyssa to vanish. It happened in an instant. The girl's parents were in disbelief that only a moment ago, their daughter had been playing in their seemingly safe yard, and then the worst happened. It was three years of heartache before there was any hint of an answer to her plight. Alyssa Scott's parents, Eric and Stacy, were devoted to their daughter. In their eyes, she was a blessing it had taken three long years of trying before she was finally conceived. Once Alyssa came into this world, Stacy couldn't focus on anything other than their beloved baby girl. Eric immediately loved her, too, promising to keep her safe no matter what. But now, their little girl was missing, and their hearts were shattered. Alyssa had grown into a vivacious and spirited child with a deep love for playing outdoors. It was a warm Sunday afternoon Eric had gone fishing with his buddies, and Stacy and Alyssa were at home in the yard. The loving mom had set up a play space for her daughter with a blanket on the grass and her most beloved toys lying all around it. Stacy could never have imagined that her world would be turned upside down that day. Seeing her daughter was happily occupied in the yard, Stacy popped inside to get them some snacks and drinks. Everything was normal. Smiling, she listened as Alyssa chatted and giggled with her favorite doll. But when Stacy got back outside, her daughter wasn't on the blanket. When the mom called out to her, she got no response. Where had her daughter gone? After 10 minutes of searching, Stacy still hadn't tracked down her daughter. She had looked inside, checking if Alyssa was in the bathroom or getting more toys, but she was nowhere to be found. The frantic mom rushed through the entire house and yard, calling Alyssa's name but still getting no answer. Her anxiety grew as she thought about the many wooded areas in the Forest Hills neighborhood of Queens in New York. Even though she was overwhelmed with terror, Stacy managed to scrape together enough composure to call Eric. Alyssa is missing. She was right in the yard, and the next minute she just vanished. Can you come home? Eric didn't hesitate for even a second, hurrying into his car and speeding home. He arrived to his wife sobbing on the back door steps. Can you tell me what happened? Where did she go? He asked. Stacy struggled to get the words out in between sobs, her whole body shaking. We were in the yard. Alyssa was playing on her blanket and I was over here reading. I went inside for a second to get us some snacks and when I got back she was gone. Eric paled in horror at his wife's words. Since a whole hour had passed already, Eric got on the phone to the police. They quickly arrived at the Scott residence and opened an investigation into Alyssa's disappearance. The authorities carefully searched every inch of the property and all the nearby streets. They interviewed neighbors, but no one had any information about the lost girl. Her parents clutched each other's hands tight as the day darkened to night. Soon, passing days turned into weeks, then months, still without any clues in Alyssa's case. The police officers relentlessly kept up their search, but there was no sign of the little girl. It didn't take long for the press to find out about the tragic event, and the story quickly became national news, touching the hearts of many people all over the country. Eric and Stacy had difficulty handling their pain and the uncertainty of the situation. They could only blame themselves for failing to watch over their little girl, even if it was only for a moment. The guilt became a heavy burden for them both. In the meantime, the Forest Hills Police Department's lead investigator on Alyssa's case, Detective Tanya Turner, had a gut feeling that this story was more complicated than it seemed. Locating Alyssa became the detective's sole focus, and she scrutinized all the clues they had, regardless of their perceived significance. On one occasion, when she was studying old files, she came across a forgotten statement from a witness. One of the Scots' neighbors, a Mrs. Jenkins, had reported spotting a mysterious figure roaming around the street on the day that Alyssa vanished. But for some reason the lead had been disregarded as insignificant at that point in the investigation. Detective Turner made the decision to now pursue this avenue of investigation, following it to a homeless man called Jack. He had been squatting in one of Forest Hills' wooded areas, and was known for strange behavior and a record of minor criminal infractions. The detective had an uneasy feeling in her stomach as she got closer to Jack, who she had found sitting by a small campfire. She had heard the rumors of his inexplicable aggression towards strangers. Detective Turner interviewed Jack meticulously but he denied any connection to Alyssa disappearing. He maintained he wasn't in the area on that day and that he hadn't noticed anything strange. But just as Detective Turner got ready to leave, something strange caught her eye. There was a doll poking out of a ragged bag at Jack's side, and it was eerily similar to the one that had belonged to Alyssa. Adrenaline rushing, she questioned him about the doll. He muttered unintelligibly, again denying any connection to the missing girl. I found it lying in the road. I have no idea whose it is, he told the detective. Detective Turner's gut feeling was that she had stumbled upon something significant, but she would need physical evidence to take it any further. She was certain the doll was Alyssa's but couldn't tell if Jack was lying about being involved. She was determined to find the answers and to do that she'd need the doll. Before he could stop her, she grabbed it out of the dirty bag and left the forest in a hurry. The detective went straight to Eric and Stacy, revealing the doll she had successfully obtained. Stacy's eyes welled up. That's Cynthia. She was Alyssa's favorite doll. How did you get this? She asked shakily. 
Unfortunately, Detective Turner couldn't tell them more at the moment, in case they decided to pursue Jack themselves, which would endanger the investigation. I came across it nearby while doing some investigation, Tanya told them, trying to maintain her composure in the tense emotional situation. But we need to be careful and try to stay patient. I think I have a good lead and I assure you I won't give up until we find out what happened to your daughter. Eric held his wife close as they felt a kernel of hope in the midst of their sorrow. They had confidence in Detective Turner, comforted by the fact that she would do all she could to safely recover their little girl. For three years of arduous searching, Tanya dedicated all her time to helping the devastated parents track down their daughter. The detective organized a covert surveillance network around the forests where Jack had been seen. She requested extra backup, including a squad of undercover officers. She hoped they would be able to find more evidence without Jack growing suspicious. Several weeks went by, during which the team carried on their work without respite, watching the area 24-7. But it wasn't easy to track Jack's activities, and they were yet to find anything that could further connect him to Alyssa's case. Were they paying attention to the wrong lead? It didn't seem to unsettle Jack when officers confronted him. It seemed like he had nothing to conceal, which was backed up by the surveillance materials. But the authorities knew that a good criminal could easily conceal themselves. Was this the case with Jack? Tanya had to consider whether they had overlooked something about Jack. They had become so confident that he was involved in Alyssa going missing, but they still had no proof that he was undoubtedly guilty. They had less and less of a justifiable reason to be suspicious of the man. The detective couldn't understand why they were struggling so much to find any dirt on him. Tanya had a lot of experience dealing with criminals, and she was aware of how skilled they were capable of being. Was Jack one such person? Could he be such a skilled criminal that he could just hide in plain sight? Could that be the reason they couldn't find anything connecting him to the disappearance? The detective would find out the truth soon. After a lot of thought, Detective Turner began debating whether Jack was aware he was being monitored. It could be an explanation for their inability to find any evidence against him. If he knew that he was being surveilled, there was no doubt that he would know how to hide his tracks. If he was aware that he was being followed, he would know to avoid his key locations. Tanya knew they would have to figure it out ASAP. It was crucial for them to find out if he was aware of their operation because, if so, they would have to come up with a new plan. If he was conscious of their surveillance of him, their best move would be to convince him that they had lost interest in him as a suspect. Then, he might make a mistake that they could use to detain him. But one evening, something occurred that made the detective reconsider every lead she thought they had. While monitoring Jack, she noticed something else completely. Tanya wasn't sure why exactly it drew her eye, but she had the feeling it could be a major lead in their investigation. Were her instincts correct? Or was it just wishful thinking? As the police carried on their surveillance, Detective Turner realized an unfamiliar figure was sneaking around in the forest's vicinity. They appeared to be observing Jack from afar but remaining out of sight themselves. The bizarre development piqued Tanya's curiosity, leading her to pursue it further. Who could this new stranger be, and what did they have to do with Jack? In the coming days, the detective closely monitored the strange new presence. Her eyes were trained on them just as often as she was watching Jack. Then she came to realize something about this scene was off. She had initially thought the new figure was another criminal attempting to somehow contact Jack, but it wouldn't be long before she found out she was wrong. The second figure was observing Jack every single day. To Detective Turner, it almost seemed like they were covertly investigating something too. But she was well acquainted with all the detectives on the police force and all the local private investigators. This person's description didn't ring a single bell. So who were they? And why were they here? Tanya racked her brain, trying to figure out what was going on. Why was the stranger so obsessed with their investigation? Did he want something from Jack? Circumstances were becoming increasingly peculiar every day, and none of the investigators could explain it. They couldn't tell whose side the stranger was on or what reason they had for being there. The detective couldn't explain how she knew it, but she was sure that this second figure's appearance was somehow crucial to the investigation. They had inexplicably chosen to involve themselves in this case, and Detective Turner had noticed. Could this be the elusive lead they needed? Could the strange person point them in the right direction? Or were her hopes misplaced? Detective Turner suffered sleepless nights, obsessing about what the second person's intentions and motives were. She was desperate to reveal their true actions so she could discover why they were there. Then, she would be able to define what part they had in this chaotic case. Would Tanya get her hands on the answer she wanted? Through careful observation, Detective Turner and her team discovered that the mysterious stranger had been watching Jack for quite some time. They managed to identify him as Alan Redford. He turned out to be Eric and Stacy's neighbor. Why would their neighbor be lurking around in the woods watching Jack? Could he also be looking for Alyssa? At that point, Detective Turner had far more questions than she had answers. Alan Redford had become another face on her board, but she wasn't sure where to put him. Did he fall under the suspect list, or was he just an innocent bypasser? 
Did he know anything about this case at all? Or did he have his own reasons for following Jack? To put him in the right place, Detective Turner needed to find out what his true purpose was, but she couldn't for the life of her put a finger on it. She had gone through countless scenarios, but none of them seemed to fit what the man was doing unless he was a stalker who was completely oblivious to what was going on around him. That was when Detective Turner decided to change her string of thoughts. Instead of trying to link Alan to Jack, she needed to find out why he was following the man. But how would she do that? Would she go with the direct approach and just confront him? Or would she use all the skills she had learned over the years? Before she could approach him directly and find out who he was, she needed to find out if he was one of the good guys or one of the bad guys. If he were a bad guy, he would take off the moment he saw her badge. But if he were a good guy, he'd stand his ground and answer her questions. Which one would it be? So Detective Turner decided to do a little more digging into the man before she acted. She asked her co-workers to look into his past and to see what they could find. The only problem was that they couldn't find anything but his address. This man's record was cleaner than Jack's appeared to be. How was that possible? As soon as Detective Turner located his house, she knocked on his front door. There was no immediate response, so she decided to call out to him. Mr. Redford, I'm Detective Turner with the Forest Hills Police Department. Please open up. It was then that Detective Turner heard some loud shouts and crashes inside. She drew her pistol and kicked the door open. Without hesitation, Detective Turner radioed for backup and stormed the house. She saw a glimpse of a man trying to run out of the house through the back door. Freeze. Hold it right there. Put your hands up and don't move, she shouted. Mr. Redford, is there someone else in this house? Mr. Redford turned around with a sick grin on his face. I just wanted some company. She's under the stairs. To her immense relief there, curled up in a corner under the stairs, was Alyssa. She looked malnourished and frightened, but she was alive. The team rushed her to safety while others arrested Alan Redford for kidnapping. Alan Redford, you are under arrest for the kidnapping of Alyssa Scott, one police officer said. The nightmare was finally over, and Alyssa would be reunited with her parents after three agonizing years. Eric and Stacy received the call they had been praying for. Alyssa was safe, and they rushed just across the road to be reunited with their daughter. As they held her in their arms, the floodgates of emotions opened, and tears of joy mixed with tears of pain from the years of separation. After all this time, she was just across the road. They couldn't believe that Alan, who had helped look for Alyssa, had her in his house for three years. In the aftermath of the rescue, Alyssa revealed to the police what had happened to her during those three long years. Alan, their neighbor, had indeed kidnapped her that fateful day and kept her hidden away in his house. He had threatened her not to make a sound or try to escape, terrifying her into silence. She had dropped her favorite doll, Cynthia, just as Alan had grabbed her from their backyard. With Alyssa's statement and the evidence gathered, Alan was charged with kidnapping, and his sordid past was fully exposed. The road to healing for Alyssa, Eric, and Stacy was long and challenging, but they had each other's love and support to carry them through. Professional counseling helped Alyssa cope with her trauma, and she showed remarkable strength in rebuilding her life. Meanwhile, the trial against Alan proceeded, and he was sentenced to life in prison. The community, once plagued by fear, finally found some closure and a sense of security. Detective Tanya Turner's dedication and unwavering pursuit of justice did not go unnoticed. She was commended for her exceptional work on the case and received numerous awards and recognition for bringing Alyssa home and bringing the perpetrators to justice. Through their ordeal, Eric, Stacy, and Alyssa emerged as a stronger family. The experience had taught them the importance of cherishing every moment together and being vigilant about each other's safety. Alyssa grew into a resilient young woman, determined to make the most of her second chance at life. Eric and Stacy became advocates for child safety and worked to raise awareness about kidnapping prevention. As the years passed, Alyssa's kidnapping case became a distant memory for the public. The media moved on to other stories, and the neighborhood of Forest Hills slowly returned to its sense of normalcy. For Alyssa and her family, life continued, marked by growth, love, and healing. They paid tribute to the bravery of Detective Turner and the dedicated police officers who never gave up on finding Alyssa.